Hey, good morning, Caroline. First, here's what happened and Caroline talked. First of all, thank you so much for being on this panel with us. Um, I think this film, is, this show is very, I think, important because it talks about mental health from the perspective of not only grown, grown adults, but also from children. And this is for Terrell, Akili, Kwame, and D, everyone. Um, it has to do with the concept of noise because I've noticed in the show that there's visual, there's a visual language of noise and then there's auditory noise. So like we, we, we see that for David, he processes noise differently to other people. Like he either drowns it out or he like, or he, or he just like focuses on it. Cause there's a scene in season one between Marissa, David and Saren that I thought kind of reflects his whole thought process where the two of Saren and David are having a conversation and Marissa is just background noise. And I realized that's kind of a trend throughout the whole series and going into season, um, season two. And then I noticed that for David, his home is devoid of like visual noise. Everything is gray. It's like flat. And it's like, he's trying to like drown out the noise and ignore like all of the noise in his head. So can you tell me Terrell as a writer, like developing that language for him as a character and for Kwame and Akili playing David as someone who has such complex thought processes and is trying to adapt to the situations that he's in with regards to noise. And for D, like creating this visual space for him, like I thought, I think his apartment is so interesting because it doesn't suit the person that he seems to be or who he used to be as a child. Um, first of all, thank you so much. And, and you know, um, everybody, everybody who knows me knows I'm really geek because I'm like, oh my God, she gets it. She understands. Bless you. Thank you. Like you, you don't know how hard it is sometimes. You'd be like, I try to be intentional about these things. So yes, there, there, there's intentionality around around that when we you know when we first pitched this show to Miss Winfrey we talked very deeply about um you know how young people metabolize and synthesize uh childhood trauma and if you remember and I'm not spoiling anything but for those of you who haven't seen season one you should see it and uh, David suffers a tragedy in his life um and it's really it's it's pretty loud and shocking and the way in which he metabolizes everything after that is what he hears. He heard a shot, right? That's how that's how the tragedy, that's how the trauma entered him into his psyche. He heard it first, right? And so since and so anytime uh, a person has an experience like that, however it, it affects them, that's how their bodies will try to fortify a survival mechanism for, for it, right? If you see it, your, your, your ability to see and what you see can be triggering. So you're constantly, you're vigilant about what's in your space. Um, if there's a trauma that you heard that kept happening and keeps playing over and over in your head, you wanna mute down any of that in your space so that you can be aware, so you can stay ready, like Sky tells him to be, right? So he's trying to stay ready by keeping distractions low, even what he wears. And we had a great, you know, designers, um, from our, our, our production designer, uh, Mark, and to our costume designer, Fern, uh, Fernando Rodriguez, um, we just, we talked about like what David needs to present, like he has got, like you said, everything together, but also uh, how to make it so that it's easy and palatable, so it doesn't disrupt his, um, his ability to, um, um, to focus, right? Um, he doesn't wear, you won't see David in any uh, crazy colors, for example. Um, when you go into his house, you don't see like, you know, a pink uh, 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 chair anywhere, right? And that's because he's, he's trying to keep as much of that as calm as possible. Um, you don't see a crazy speaker system. You don't ever hear him playing the radio, right? Um, and, those, and so I'm glad you picked up on those things. And that's, that, that means you're, you know, you're the, you're the audience that we want. So you keep you keep coming back and bringing us more insight. I was just gonna say Terrell put it so perfectly. Um, I don't really I don't even know what else to say. But um, yeah, I honestly do think this soundtrack does add to everything as well. It's honestly a team effort, and like you said, the clothes from the clothes to the soundtrack, everything honestly just helps me embody the character too, so I can put on my best performance as well as the words on the page. Thank you, Terrell, and the host writer's room. For me, um, like Achilles said, and Terrell, I mean, Terrell said it perfectly. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, I went to them whenever I needed, you know, help with understanding, you know, um, where David needed to be at, you know, like you say, with him quieting the noise or, 
you know, his mental capacity, you know, um, Terrell, Kyle, Erica, you know, they will always help me, uh, Lucian, you know, would help me through those moments when there were moments where I struggled and I couldn't figure out, you know, where is he, where he's supposed to be at, you know, at this, at this moment, or how do I get him there? And, uh, all of them do such a great job of breaking it down for you so simply the same way Terrell just explained it. Like he did that so simply that it makes you say, ah, I get that. Wow. It's that light bulb moment pops up. You're like, oh, okay. Cause you be almost like David as an actor. Sometimes we, we, we're making stuff so much more difficult. We create these problems. And then Terrell comes in and be like, oh, if you just that right there, you're like, oh, okay. All right. I got you. All right. We cool. And then we in there. So yeah. <laughs> That was a great explanation, Kwame, of it. Um, and, and you're right. Everything is very intentional. And uh, from the production design um, to the, uh, the dress, the sound design was ex extremely important, um, sometimes even more so than the visual, uh, because of the fact that everything is in David's head, his imagination, everything is playing out. So even though those moments of you know, especially in older David, there's a lot of stuff going on in his head. And so we processed that and we were trying figuring out the language of trying to make sure we, you know, the audience got that as well. So a lot of the, you know, the um, editing, editing was very important. We even had uh, nicknames and shorthand for words we would use for different sounds um, um, from the ringing sound that is you know, what happens in uh, David's head because it's so important at different times. So our mix sessions are epic. <laughs> we just had one because of the fact everything has to be right. And it just so happens that Terrell and I were both on the same page with that because I'm also very sensitive to sounds. Um, and growing up in neighborhoods, we um, uh, those that did is like, cause I was always watching with a third eye, listening with a third ear of anything that was going to come at me. So I was, you know, I stayed ready. So I'm very sensitive to those. And that's what happens to David in a way that when he gets to become older, David, he's still processing in that way, even though he doesn't have to. Yeah, there was a phrase I was trying to remember and it's sensory deprivation. His apartment reminds, reminds me of a sensory deprivation chamber. It's just one big room that he removes all like visual noise so I, like i think it's amazing the way you guys translate everything into like specific things with his behavior and the way he processes his trauma so great show fantastic acting for both kwame and akili and thank you for this story Terrell. so my last question is for Terrell, and it has to do with the, con the analogy of games so like it seems that david is always constantly playing a game whether it's a, on the block learning to survive on the block is learning to s live at home with his mother and his brother and then as an adult, he's learning to survive the game of corporate world and surviving as a black man. So could you just tell me about building that analogy into David's character to the, his relationships with the people around him? And will there come a time where he won't have to play the game anymore? Um, it's a good question. I don't know. Um, but I, I, it definitely comes from my own life. I, you will even see me when, when there's things I don't want to do. Oh, how can I make a game of this? Right? Like, I'll go, how do, how do I make a game? How do I make this into a puzzle? Because human beings naturally like solving puzzles, we like solving mysteries, we like figuring things out, we're curious. We don't like to just work. Like that's, a, it's a myth that, that black people are lazy, all people are lazy. People don't like to work. <laughs> people like to find things out. People like to discover. People will do a whole bunch of things if it's like fulfilling in a curiosity way. That's just who you know people are. And I think black people specifically love to invent things. We love a game. We love a story. We love a, you know, we we love uh, the complexity of music, for example. Like so we couldn't just have classical notes follow each other in a one, two, three, two, two, three. We had to one, two, three, two, 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 three, two, three, two, three. We had to complicate and syncopate the rhythm, right? Um, because it because that's fun that's interesting how can i make this even more interesting to myself and so i do i do that in my life all the time sometimes that's creating chaos <laughs> sometimes i'm making more work for myself and more noise for myself and the world around me than i need to um and and sometimes and i'm old enough now and when i say old enough i mean by uh, after years of being not old enough <laughs> I finally got to 40 and was like, oh, 
I can actually be like, mm -mm, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> like, I'm just not going to do anything, <laughs> right? Instead of being like, I'm going to make this more complicated. And I think that's, you know, I, I definitely think David's not there yet. Um, but he believes that, you know, making things more complicated and more chaotic is actually the way forward. And a lot of us do that, right? A lot of us make more mess in order for our brains to stay stimulated because then we'll want to get through it, right? Um, and that's a survival technique and that's okay. It's okay to do that sometimes. Um, when, when do you learn to put that down, right? Um, and some of my messes have been really, like, really successful. Like, I make a mess and people are like, that's a beautiful mess. We love that mess. We want to see that mess. Well, God help you if they start rewarding your mess, because then you want to do it all the time for real, right? Like, you're going you go, you go to give, give me praise for being imaginative. And so um, you have to, you know, you, as human beings, we have to, you know, often say to ourselves, when do I need rest? When do I need to not do, when I need to be still? and no, right? Um, and, and I think, and David is not there yet, but we do have fun watching him make his messes though. <laughs> and I think that's the difference between second season and first season. First season, some of the messes he got into, they, he certainly didn't make up on his own. He didn't, he, he, may, he may have made them worse, but he was trying to get through them. Um, and poor kid finally figured out some ways of, of doing some stuff and, and, got, and got through it, and thank goodness. And I think in second season, we see a person still thinking that they're on the battlefield when they are not. <laughs> and that, you know, and I think there's a lot more joy and humor in seeing that um, because we know the stakes are high, um, but they're not as life or death as they were in all cases. There are some cases where things get pretty tenuous in season two. Okay, thank you so much.